Yeah, so it's a real, um, that's a bit loud, or is that good volume? It's a real pleasure to have begun this partnership with uh, Rigetti Computing to help them overcome the, the challenges and achieve the opportunities available through quantum computing, which will be truly disruptive, uh, both in the NISC era and in uh, the fault tolerant era. So um, what we do uh, at uh, Quantum Benchmark is help identify and overcome errors, such as you've heard about in the previous uh, discussions. And so let me give you a simple analogy for that, which is we think of high performance computers and the model of that is very different from quantum computing. So we have uh, a system that is discrete and predictable. So with a high performance quantum computer, a high performance uh, computer, you're mainly concerned with understanding essentially the speed of the operations. And that'll tell you that it gets you from A to B, it's discrete and pr predictable, you know where you're gonna go, the only question is how fast are you gonna get there. With quantum computing, however, we have a different challenge because the process is continuous and error prone. So it's much more like a rocket ship where we have to worry about navigation, we have to worry about correcting for turbulence, thruster fluctuations, and so on. And so the, the challenges of quantum computing lie mainly in this domain. And uh, let me just emphasize the extent of that challenge. So obviously for navigating in three-dimensional space with a rocket, you have to worry about three-dimension parameters. A, a gate fidelity, like you hear about, is basically telling you essentially how much are you off course but not telling you necessarily in which way you're going off course. So in the conventional classical world, there are three different ways you can go off course, X, Y, and Z. In the quantum space, the number of ways you can go off course scales with the Hilbert space dimension, which is the power of quantum computing. So with an n qubit computer, you have two to the n, uh, two to the n dimensional state space. So for a 50 qubit computer, that's two to the 50, which is an enormous number. The number of different error pathways that you have to con be cons monitoring uh, scales as two to the four n, which is exponential in the number of qubits, and for a 50 qubit processor, that's two to the 200 different error pathways. So instead of worrying about three spatial dimensions, we're worried about two to the 200 dimensions, which is roughly the number of atoms in our galaxy. So that's the scope of the challenge. That's where we bring our expertise to bear in helping hardware makers achieve the capabilities by identifying and overcoming those error pathways. So essentially to give you kind of more of a big picture view of what we do is we have a software system which we call TrueQ which runs on the lab control computer. Now we're delivering value to the Rigetti ecosystem in two ways. One is through in-house tools for the design cycle and the other is tools available to the users. So let me first talk about the in-house tools and our initial steps in that direction with this, this young uh, partnership we've just, we've just started. So the, the engineers and scientists at Rigetti can run our tools on their lab control computer and characterize their chip performance. Um, they can diagnose these full system errors, this big two to the four n dimensional space efficiently. They can use that to optimize pulse design and compilation and inform their fab process, their design cycle and ultimately deliver improved quantum processors to users. So let's take a look and let's look at a test case of how we've begun this partnership already, which is um, here applying our software on this state-of-the-art chip from Rigetti, the Aspen 7 chip uh, with a 32 qubit architecture. And so what we've done as a, as a sample is say, run a C0 gate on qubits 13 and 14 and explore the impact of the crosstalk on qubit 16. And then we can systematically go through each of the different configurations and explore how it's working. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to overwhelm you with two to the 200 data points, but just to give a sample, uh, the first step then is to identify the scope of the crosstalk. Uh, we heard in the previous talk about measuring crosstalk at the physical level on the chip. And here what we're able to do is understand how those physical level measurements will manifest at the gate level or the operational level. And so this is the kind of data you would get out. Uh, I don't expect everyone in the room to understand all the details, so give me a moment to address the experts in the room. But basically this is a histogram of different error rates uh, that are identified uh, before uh, Rigetti applies its compensation tools. And uh, what you see then, are these are labeled by the different, what are called poly operators, which label these two to the four n dimensions. 
And you can see a spectrum of errors. Um, terms that involve the qubit 16 are crosstalk errors like you heard about. And uh, after identifying these, these error modes, the next step then is to apply this information to then design and develop compensation pulses, phase correction, and so on techniques to reduce those specific errors through control. And then our tools can be applied to validate that those compensations worked. And so what we see in this first test case is a dramatic reduction of the errors through the uh, intelligently applied design and control of the Rigetti uh, compiler. And so a dramatic reduction in the errors, a one body and, and uh, errors are almost completely suppressed and some small two body errors remain. So this information is very important, not just um, at the design level, but also ultimately there, this is an iterative process and there will be residual errors and those errors will impact algorithm performance in distinct ways. And so it's important to understand how each of these distinct error mechanisms can be either a benign or a less benign, uh, have a benign or less benign impact on an application's performance. This information is also cr critical as we move towards fault tolerant quantum computing. Because fault tolerance is a process which corrects errors, but it's only able to correct errors of a certain type. And so it's very important to make sure that the error profile is well behaved with respect to the goals of fault tolerance. And that's part of the long-term research program. But the outcome then is dramatically reduced errors through this iterative process. And we're looking forward to continuing this collaboration and, and uh, developing ultimately the lowest possible error rates available today. Let me take a moment to uh, talk also about the tools we can provide to the user ecosystem at, uh, for, in the Rigetti ecosystem. And uh, this is our tool which we call TrueQ Accelerate. It's basically a runtime compiler which is designed to suppress the errors which are less benign from a performance point of view. And, um, and it's a native error suppression technique. I won't go into the technical details. It basically converts coherent errors which can be problematic into stochastic errors. Um, if you don't know what that means, that's okay. This is a turnkey solution for users. Um, but so with respect to whatever the user applications are, whether it's uh, quantum chemistry, materials design, optimization, machine learning, this is a pass-through filter, which then uh, modifies essentially the operations in such a way to make them robust to the, 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 the most problematic errors when those, when those uh, algorithms are run on the chip. And ultimately delivers tools for not only improving performance, but for looking at application hardware co-design, understanding the best way to implement the circuit so as to be least sensitive to whatever residual errors remain at that point in time as the devices improve, and also provides a tool to validate solution accuracy, which I won't be able to get into, but I'll just tell you about that it exists. Here's some data uh, demonstrating how this tool improves performance. So if you look at the x-axis, that's circuit depth. Obviously, if you have residual errors in the processor, as you increase the circuit depth, the impact of those errors will accumulate. On the y-axis, I'm plotting the solution inaccuracy. This is basically the probability of getting the wrong bit string out when you run your application. And what you see is the bare performance of, of hardware. Uh, you see a, a growth of error and a, a very unstable behavior of the aggregate error due to the complexities of how the error is interplay, the interplay of the error with the algorithm. Uh, after putting it through the TrueQ uh, runtime compiler, uh, what it does is it reduces the overall error impact and makes it very stable. So it makes the impact of the error stable on the application, which allows you to then understand and predict the impact of those errors on your solution as we explore larger and larger chips and can no longer check the correctness of the solutions through high performance computing, because that's the goal. The goal is to use quantum computers to solve problems that we can't solve classically. That's quantum advantage. And when we reach that, in the near future, we are gonna to want to have tools to validate that we can trust the accuracy of the solutions in the NISC era. And so that's just summarizing the points I said verbally. And now maybe some of that was, um, for those new to the field, if some of that was too technical, I have a kind of a, a simple takeaway message for you uh, that you can hopefully uh, get something out of in spite of it being a bit cartoonish. But the idea is that when you're performing quantum computation, you're navigating through 
treacherous waters because of this continuous and error-prone nature of quantum computing. It's a double-edged sword. The power of quantum computing comes with its own challenges. And that the simple gate error rates don't capture the full story. They're the tip of the iceberg. What we really need to understand is the full extent and impact of crosstalk errors, correlated errors, coherent errors, both in the NISC era and in the fault tolerant era. And our cartoon for TrueQ is providing you with the tools you need at the design level and at the user level to navigate these waters. So on that, I'll end and, and thank you for your attention.